This is the story of what happens when things go wrong in your computer. So when we considered the Heartbleed bug, we looked at what happens when the computer program doesn't do exactly what we expected it to. In that case, the program had been written incorrectly, so rather than returning the right amount of data, it copied a whole load more data from the program to the other end of the system. So the Heartbleed bug is not the only thing that can happen when the computer goes wrong. That one was quite unique in that the program appeared to be working correctly, it carried on running. But we've all had the situation where we're running a piece of software, we do something, and then suddenly it crashes and the program quits. And in those cases what's happened is that the program has done something which the computer can't process. It's done something which what we class as an exceptional thing, and the computer has thrown an exception saying, hang on, I can't process it. And there's various things that can cause that. So I'm going to move to one of my older computers and we'll just demonstrate what happens. So we're using here the Atari Falcon which was created in the early 90s and is roughly equivalent to the sort of power of machine that we'd get at that time. The reason I want to use this rather than using a more modern system is that this system in its base state as it came could only really run one program at a time so we can make it crash and we can see what happens a lot easier than if we use a more modern system and we can then talk about how that differs. So what I've done is I've written a program in uh, machine code which will basically crash the system on command. So it's very, very simple. We have a message that's printed out. It's a bit like a sort of classic Hello World program. It prints out a message. It then waits for a key press to happen. It calls the operating system and says, get me the next key and wait until that happens. And then we have this line here, which is what crashes the system. And all this is trying to do is read from a memory location for which there is absolutely no memory in the system. The CPU in this system can access up to four gigabytes worth of memory, but this machine's only got four megabytes and about half a meg of ROM chip in there as well. So the memory address I'm gonna access here does not exist in terms of the computer's memory. So when I run this program, the computer can't satisfy the request we've asked of it because there is no memory there. It says press any key to crash the system, so I'm gonna press the space bar, and you'll see that very briefly there, two bombs appeared on screen. And this was the operating system was telling us that the program had done something that it couldn't do. And so the operating system had stopped the program running and returned control to the operating system so we can carry on. Now in that case, the operating system was capable of recovering from the error. It was something that it said, hang on, I can recover from this. I've also written another program, which is called Bad Crash, which is a lot more destructive. There we go. So it's very similar, we print out the same message, wait for the key press again. But here, rather than just reading from one memory location that we couldn't, it takes a whole load of the computer's memory and fills it with zeros. And I've chosen a point where the operating system keeps its temporary variables and so on. So when I run this, it's gonna totally trash the system and we'll see what happens. So I'll assemble this up. And if I now run this one, press any key to crash the system, I press the space bar again and the system's frozen this time, it hasn't even been able to print out the error message to say what's gone wrong. That's because we've destroyed the operating system or parts of the operating system's data as well and it can't get out of it. I can't even hit control alt delete to reset it, I've got to physically hit the hardware reset button to bring it back up. So one of the problems there is that we'd written to memory locations that belonged to something else, in this case it was the operating system. Now on a modern computer, and in fact on the CPU of this machine as well, but it wasn't used in this operating system. You have something called a memory management unit which can partition the memory between the different programs and can catch those sort of errors and say to the operating system, hang on, this program's trying to do this, which you've said it can't do, and so the operating system can stop it. It's not just memory access though, there's all sorts of things that the program might try and do which it can't necessarily satisfy. A classic example would be to divide by zero. There isn't really an answer to that, Possibly you might class it as infinity. The computer can't calculate it, so it raises what's called an exception. And the operating systems are written so that it'll do something to catch that exception. So on this operating system, it would print some bombs, as we saw on the side of the screen. On an old Amiga, you'd get a guru meditation. On a Mac, you'll get a segmentation fault, and you'll get various errors on Windows. In fact, one was so common in one version of Windows that to make sure you never saw that again, they renamed the error message that came up. So that's fine when your program crashes. The operating system can catch it and with a bit of help from the hardware, clean up and make sure it doesn't happen to, it doesn't affect anything else. But who watches the watchers? And what happens if there's a, 
exception thrown by the CPU by the operating system? Well, in that case, the operating system can't recover because it doesn't know the correct state it's meant to be in. And so it panics. And so we get on our screen, if we're using Linux or a Mac, at what's called a kernel panic because the operating system can't continue. On Windows, it's the infamous blue screen of death. And generally, it'll give you some information that's useful to a developer to see what's going wrong with your operating system. You have to reset the machine and hopefully it'll start up again. Sometimes you're a little more unfortunate and you have to replace the whole machine. It's worth bearing in mind that not all the exceptions that an operating system has to deal with are necessarily bad. When you hit a key on the keyboard, move your mouse, or get a network packet on your network, that's something exceptional which the operating system has to deal with, but it's able to process that and then carry on doing whatever it was doing beforehand. Occasionally you'll get something happening which just completely destroys the operating system's ability to continue. Now, it's easy to understand why that might happen if you've got a bug in your code like we saw with Heartbleed, but sometimes you'll be sitting using a machine and it's been fined for years, weeks, months, whatever it is, and suddenly you'll get a kernel panic. And it's helpful then to think about what might have changed. Perhaps if you're a Linux or BSD freak and you're regularly uh, compiling your kernel, then you may have misconfigured it and so you put in a new kernel and suddenly you started up and it kernel panics. If you've just installed a new piece of hardware, then it's possible the drivers for that or the hardware itself is incompatible or grating with the system and causing two parts of your operating system to not work as well together. But occasionally, just for no reason at all, your computer will start kernel panicking and uh, you won't necessarily know what causes it. Well, a common cause is perhaps the memory, if the memory starts to fail. But occasionally, even if the memory is working correctly, there may still be a mistake in the memory. If a cosmic ray hits the actual memory cell, then it can flip the bit from a zero to a one or a one to a zero. This is more likely to happen if you're higher up. So people in Colorado, for example, are more likely to suffer from this on their computer systems, or a satellite in space is likely to have problems like this. There's not much you can do to prevent this. Cosmic ray is going to hit it if it's going to hit it. You can shield it perhaps with a bit of metal, but you could also use memory that actually can detect that an error has happened. So one of the things you see is error correcting memory or ECC memory. But even so, if you still can get to the point where the operating system gets corrupted and can't continue as you'd expect, and then it's just going to have to kernel panic. When A and B transmit, they have to arrange that when their packets arrive at the base station, that they arrive this one in this time slot and this one in this time slot. I've attached the square of side two directly to the south, as it were, of the two boxes of side one. 